Hey guys, welcome back to Battery Hacker. In this video, we're going to figure out what size inverter you should use with a 100 amp hour battery. If your battery is lithium, I'll suggest sticking around 1000 watts maximum. And if you're using lead acid, then about 200 watts per 100 amp hour battery is a safe range. In a few minutes, you'll understand exactly why those numbers make sense. I'm Michael, the guy behind Battery Hacker, here to make solar and battery math super easy. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about lithium batteries. A 100 amp hour lithium battery can normally supply 100 amps of current. That's what we call a 1C rate. Before you plan anything, always make sure your battery is actually rated to handle that much continuous current. Now, if the battery voltage is around 12 volts when it's nearly empty, here's the simple math. 12 volts times 100 amps equals 1,200 watts of power available from the battery. However, as always, we must consider system losses. Most inverters are about 95% efficient, and you'll have a few other small losses too. So if we take an overall 90% efficiency that gives 1,200 watts times 0 0.9 equals 1,080 watts of usable output. That's why, for a 12-volt, 100-amp-hour lithium battery, the biggest inverter you should pick is roughly 1,000 watts. If you've got a 24-volt, 100-amp-hour lithium battery, then the limit doubles, around 2,000 watts. And for a 48-volt, 100-amp-hour server-type battery, you can safely go up to about 4,000 watts. Now, if you connect two 48-volt, 100-amp-hour batteries together, forming a 48-volt, 200-amp-hour bank, you can handle up to around 8,000 watts. Just remember, if you try to pull more power than the battery can handle, the Internal Protection System, or BMS, will instantly cut off the battery to keep it safe. Let me know how many batteries and which inverter you have in the comments section. All right, now let's talk about lead-acid batteries because they behave a bit differently from lithium ones. Unlike lithium batteries, a lead-acid battery doesn't have any internal computer or BMS to protect it, so it's completely up to you to make sure it's not pushed too hard. If you try to pull too much current, it'll still work, but the battery's lifespan will drop quickly. To keep things safe, a good rule is to stay around a C rate of 0.2 which means roughly 200 watts of power per 100 amp hour battery. Now, let's say you want to run a 12 volt, 1000 watt inverter with a 1000 watt load. A single 100 amp hour lead acid battery won't handle that by itself. It'll need help. You'd need to connect about five 12 volt lead acid batteries in parallel, giving you a total of 12 volts, 500 amp hours. Let's check the math behind that setup. 12 volts multiplied by 500 amp hours, multiplied by a C rate of 0 0.2, multiplied by 0 0.9 for losses, equals approximately 1,180 watts. That's enough to comfortably run a 1,000 watt inverter without putting too much strain on the batteries. It might seem like extra work, but that's just how lead-acid chemistry operates. You trade simplicity for lower current handling and shorter lifespan under heavy loads. Now let's see how long a 100 amp hour battery can run a 1000 watt inverter at full load. A 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery stores about 1,280 watt hours of energy. After efficiency losses, that leaves around 1,152 watt-hours usable. If you're running a 1,000 watt load, you'll get roughly 1.15 hours of runtime. That's about one hour and nine minutes. For a 48 volt, 100 amp hour server battery, total energy is about 5,120 watt-hours. After efficiency losses, you'll have roughly 4,608 watt-hours available. 
so with a 1,000 watt load, it can run for around 4.6 hours or about 4 hours and 36 minutes. So now you know exactly what inverter size makes sense for a 100 amp hour battery, whether it's lithium or lead acid. If this breakdown helped you understand inverter sizing better, make sure to like this video. It really supports the channel. And check out my other guides on solar batteries, off-grid power, and inverter efficiency. I'm Michael from Battery Hacker, and I'll see you in the next one.